Alrighty, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about destructive and non-destructive workflows. Last time we were here we talked about masks and editing different kinds of masks and how to create masks and folders. So to begin we're in our standard texture tab, tool settings. We've been in here before. You can see over here we have to choose which texture project we want. Sometimes it backs out. Double click it, it'll bring us right in here. So the difference between destructive and non-destructive workflows is pretty simple. Um, and for me, it's utilizing fill layers and masks over paint layers. And I'll show you what I mean here. So let's go ahead and come in here. Alt select. Let's go ahead and choose like a green. So if I wanted to paint this, boom. And then I was like, ooh, you know what? I really don't like that color. If I can come in here and select, it doesn't change, it doesn't do anything. So I can paint over it and get something new. And this goes for all different layers. This goes for the albedo, rough, any of these active maps that you have, any channel that you can edit. If you're just painting in a paint layer, you won't be able to adjust it later on. You can erase it, you can turn it up and down, you can do stuff like this, but you don't have the ability to edit. And this comes into effect later when you're doing more detail work. And let's say you wanted to add rust um, and you didn't and you didn't want to do it procedurally but you want there's some parts that just need hand painted rust so if you were to go into let's say your textures and then you wanted to choose let's use like charcoal for instance um, let's actually drag charcoal up into our brush there we go let's turn the opacity down and let's turn this let's say red okay and we start painting a little bit on I need a little bit more. I turn the flow down. But, and we get kind of what we're looking for. You can see I can't come back here. I can erase it, but I can't like change the color. So that's the that's this is what is considered a destructive layer. Whenever you are painting and you cannot edit it. Now, if I wanted to do a non-destructive layer, what you do is you go to fill layer instead. Say if I just wanted a base color, I come in here. I can choose what color I want. And then boom. Now we're here. Now say if I wanted to add, um, let's say rust to this. I'd be like, okay, now I want to add rust. So let's just go to albedo, let's go roughness. Let's go uh, bump. So for the roughness, we're going to bring it up. Okay, for the color, we're going to choose rust, a rusty color. Okay, boom. And for bump, we're going to bring it up a little. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click add a mask, add a black mask. Um, and now that I have a black mask, instead of actually going in and using a procedural, which will be a coming tutorial, I'll just paint this one in. So inside here, I'm gonna drag my charcoal up. Actually, let's go with dirt. And if you remember for these, if it has a little cloud, you gotta double click it for it to download. Let's do dirt small. I'm assuming rust might even be one, but for now we'll be okay. So now I can come in here, make sure I'm white up here. You can adjust that right here or hit X to reverse it. All right, the flow is a little too, little too soft for my liking. All right, so now we can, let's say, if I wanted it to look like this, which I don't, we could do that. Okay, we could do a scatter too. Okay. And you can also erase it, but then you look at it and you're like, mm, you know what? I'm not really liking the height. That's not reading how I want. So I can come back into not the mask or where you're painting into the mask, but the actual color itself and be like, mm, it's not reading. Right. So let's, let's go a little bit more this color. Okay. And like, that's too much of a bump. So let's, let's remove it. And you can even go back into your base layer, um, your base color, and you can select it and you can be like, okay, I want it to a little darker and this is what is considered non-destructive because no matter how far I go into working right now I can always go back and edit the color I can edit the height I can add new new adjustment into here if I didn't want the bump I can turn it off I can turn it on it'll remember um, let's say like oh you know what maybe this should have like a slight metal tint to it I can come in here and I can just select metal and I can just give it a little bit of a little bit of a metal hint so it's coming and this goes for everything, scratches, procedurals, fills, 
hand, uh, hand painting instead of just using a, a paint layer, use this. Use a mask and paint into the mask to bring in and out what, you, what you're looking for. An example would be here. It's like, oh, it's not only can you just change the color and the height, but I can go into the eraser and I can choose, let's say, large, um, oh, yeah, sorry. Let's say tool settings, or, sorry, I'm in the fill. Come up here to the eraser, large dirt. We're gonna go ahead and put this one in. And I'm going to turn the hardness down and I'm going to turn the scatter up. And now I can kind of just, depending on how much I want to erase from here, I can erase. The hardness is not high enough. Okay. And you can see I'm slowly able to take small bits of this away. And you can just keep editing on this layer. So that's a real quick down and dirty, the difference between destructive and non-destructive layers. So in my advice would be always use fill layers with masks or folders with masks and fill layers. That way you can always go back and edit everything in post. Alrighty, until next time.